And as Sri Lanka grapples with an economic crisis, the newly elected president Anura Kumare Desanayaka is taking decisive steps to reshape the country's financial future. In a televised address, President Desanayaka called for immediate talks with the IMF regarding a crucial $2.9 billion bailout. And now this package was a lifeline for Sri Lanka, helping to alleviate severe shortages of food, fuel and medicine that plagued the country during its financial meltdown back in 2022. While the bailout helped stabilize the economy and return it to growth, it also imposed painful austerity measures that may have left many citizens struggling to make ends meet. This Nayaka, who identifies as a Marxist, won the presidency, promising to reverse unpopular tax hikes and increase public servant salaries. His victory was marked by a significant margin, securing over 1.2 million votes more than his nearest rival, which signals a strong public desire for change. Now, AKD's promises to voters include cutting down the numbers of MPs. This Nayaka had promised that the first cabinet decision will be to cancel MPs' pensions, MPs' get vehicle permits which are sold for 20 to 30 million rupees. Remember, they don't buy a vehicle with that permit. They take a vehicle from the government for their use and sell the permit. The NPP government will stop issuing permits to MPs, which is a bribe, according to them. He also said, and I'm quoting, there will be no motorcades of seven, eight vehicles to travel behind ministers, maximum one or two. Isn't that good? Let's begin. This Nayaka added, and I'm quoting again, this poor country cannot bear the cost of maintaining these MPs and ministers. In a symbolic gesture of change, reports have surfaced of hundreds of state-owned vehicles abandoned around the capital, and these vehicles, including luxury SUVs, were reportedly left by former officials, prompting this Nayaka's administration to launch an investigation into their disappearance. <laughs> Not that they stopped on their own, but after our comrade Anurad Sanayake became president, these vehicles came to a stop. There is a reason for this. This shows how public property has been abused. This is how public property was used. If Anurad Sanayake did not win the presidency, these vehicles would be running on the roads even today. Even today, they will run with fuel obtained from public funds, from people's taxes. The economic situation is dire. In March of 2020, a ban on vehicle imports was enacted amid a foreign exchange crisis, making cars prohibit prohibitively expensive. A 10-year-old Toyota SUV now costs around $150,000, while a 5-year-old Range Rover can exceed $300,000. The backdrop of this Nayaka's rise to power includes months of public protest that culminated in the storming of the presidential palace back in July of 2022. And this unrest ultimately led to the resignation of former President Gotabaya Rajapaksa, highlighting the urgent demand for change among the people. This Nayaka, in his new plans, aimed to restructure outstanding loans and negotiate better terms for debt relief. He emphasized the need to expedite these negotiations with creditors to support the country's financial recovery. The IMF has expressed readiness to engage with the new administration, emphasizing a desire to build on the gains made under the current bailout program. However, analysts warn that the IMF is unlikely to shift its core conditions, which include restrictions on money printing and strict revenue targets. As President Sanayaka moves forward with his agenda, the question remains, will his administration be able to negotiate better terms with the IMF and how quickly can the government implement measures that truly benefit the people of Sri Lanka? The answers to these questions will determine the economic landscape for millions of Sri Lankans in the months ahead. For all the latest news, download the Vyond app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.